Good morning and welcome back to Modern Physics Session 5. I hope you have completed your pending assignments and other works. Last session we had started vector atom model. Basically the vector atom model rests on two pillars space quantization and the spinning electron hypothesis. Orbits of electrons around the nucleus are restricted. It cannot take any orientation, but specified orientation as fixed by the parameters like various orbital and spin quantum numbers, then associated angular momentum and magnetic moments, etc. In classical physics, you have seen that when a body is executing circular motion, it is associated with angular momentum. That is vector L is equal to R cross P. That is moment of linear momentum is called angular momentum. But angular momentum or the cross product, because angular momentum is cross product of R and P. So cross product is always an axial vector which acts along the axis of rotation or perpendicular to the plane containing R and P and is given by right handed screw, uh, screw rule or right handed thumb rule etc. you have come across. So when electron is revolving around the nucleus, for particular orientation of the electron orbit, there will be a particular direction for angular momentum L. Or say the direction of angular momentum vector specifies or fix the orientation of electron orbit in space. So this orbital angular momentum is one of the quantized vectors which restricts the orientation of electron orbit in space. In addition to this orbital motion of electrons, it also ha will have spin motion and there will be an associated spin angular momentum. So electron while moving around the nucleus, there will be orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. When there are two vectors, then naturally there will be a resultant that is total angular momentum. And since electron is a quantum mechanical system, all these or all these vectors are quantized vectors. So our discussion is mainly on these quantized vectors and quantum numbers. Today we will try to understand the quantization of this angular momenta in a better way. Basically angular momentum is one of the very important physical quantities and it plays a significant role in physics. We know that the angular momentum is a conserved quantity. That is as the system evolves, angular momentum will remain constant provided there is no external force or torque acts on the system. The discussion of angular momentum is equally important in classical as well as quantum systems. For example, planetary motion, that is a very easy simple example to understand. So planetary motion in classical mechanics, uh, the angular momentum study is very important and you have come across, you have studied Kepler's laws of planetary motion and uh, uh, one of the laws that is aerial velocity is a constant. It is directly related to this uh, concept of angular momentum, conservation of angular momentum. Similarly, electrons revolving around the nucleus which is a quantum system where angular momentum again uh, play a significant role and uh, uh, that is a conserved quantity. We will see how it is conserved in electron motion and it is very important even in nuclear physics as well. But where today we just rest, uh, restrict our studies on electron motion around the nucleus. So we will try to understand these orbital angular momentum, spin angular momentum, then total angular momentum and the quantization of the magnitude and direction of these angular momenta. Let us see. We will start with a classical system. Best example is solar system. So there are two kinds of angular momenta associated with planetary motion. First, the angular momentum due to revolution of the planet, say Earth around the sun. It is called orbital angular momentum of the planet. And it is defined or measured through that basic relation vector L is equal to R cross P, where small r is the position vector of the planet with respect to the axis of rotation 
and the p corresponds to linear momentum mass into velocity where velocity v is linear velocity which is directed along the tangent to the orbit the orbital angular momentum vector l is having a direction perpendicular to the plane of motion of the earth around the sun so you may note that this angular momentum of earth is classical data and it is not quantized that is there is no restriction on the value of orbital angular momentum of the planet due to rotation around the sun or in classical system the orbital angular momentum can take continuous range of values or it is not discrete values or quantized values or there is no restriction on the allowed values of the magnitude of orbital angular momentum of the planet or a classical system similarly the direction of orbital angular momentum is also not restricted in classical systems that is only thing is that it will be perpendicular to the plane of the orbit which comes from very def definition of that cross product same is the case with spin angular momentum of the planet that is magnitude of the spin angular momentum speaks about magnitude of moment of inertia then spinning uh, moment of inertia of the spinning body about the axis maybe uh, there is angular velocity with which the object is spinning those things will be in included in that spin angular momentum but that is again not quantized either in magnitude or in direction so when these eight or nine planets uh, revolving around sun there is no restriction on the magnitude or direction of orbital or spin angular momentum that is the, this is a situation in classical system but quantum system the, uh, it is something different we'll see we'll analyze quantum system that is revolution of electron around the uh, nucleus so angular momentum is applicable in quantum system as well but the situation is different when we come to quantum system like an atom having many electrons revolving around the nucleus the electrons face a lot of restrictions on the revolution around the nucleus and which we call quantization basically quantum mechanical studies involve mathematical formulations and solutions of certain standard differential equations the solutions of the differential equation describing the quantum mechanical system or the solution of the differential equation would predict the behavior of quantum mechanical system an important expression which discuss the behavior of quantum mechanical system is schrodinger equation and the solution of schrodinger equation for quantum mechanical system like atom or say electron in an atom results in what we call it quantum numbers and these quantum numbers put restrictions on the magnitude and direction of angular momenta of that particular electron okay so this quantum mechanics play a significant role and the schrodinger equation solution are very important in discussing this uh, restriction or quantization or quantum restrictions on angular momentum of electron the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum of a bound electron which is revolving around the nucleus is restricted by the equation that is capital l is equal to square root of l into l plus 1 into h cut right this is actually your this equation basically comes from the solution of schrodinger equation and in this small l is called orbital or azimuthal quantum number which has got values 0 1 etc n minus 1 n is principal quantum number and n is equal to 1 for first orbit n is equal to 2 for second orbit which you have seen also in uh, bohr atom model this expression for the orbital angular momentum for orbital electron that is capital l is equal to square root of l into l plus 1 into h cut comes purely from solution of schrodinger equation and the orbital or azimuthal quantum number small l represents integral values which corresponds to various kinds of orbitals say s p d f etc for example l is equal to 0 it represents s orbital then l is equal to 1 it is p orbital l is equal to 2 
it is d orbital and so on. So, it is uh, atomic or uh, this notation is spectroscopic notations S, P, D, F, G, etc. Generally, similar notations are used in uh, nuclear physics while discussing shell model. So, these are the standard notations. So, the equation capital L is equal to square root of L into L plus 1 into H cut states that the orbital angular moment of electron cannot take any value. That is magnitude of orbital angular momentum of electron cannot take any value, but only some allowed values, restricted values restricted by this equation. For example, if you take S orbital, L is equal to 0, then orbital angular momentum capital L is equal to square root 0 into 0 plus 1 into H cut that is 0. That is S electron or S orbital electron will have orbital angular momentum 0. If you go for P orbital, small l is equal to 1, then uh, you can again it is calculated on the slide that is L is equal to square root of 1 into 1 plus 1 into H cut that is square root 2 H cut. That is P electron will have orbital angular momentum which is equal to root 2 H cut or H bar, H cross, etc. it is used. And for d orbital, it is L is equal to root 2 into 2 plus 1 into h cut that is equal to root 6 into h cut and so on. That is the orbital angular momentum of electron of an electron revolving around the nucleus is restricted to have only these magnitudes, not any value. You cannot take continuous value. These electrons cannot take continuous value, only some restricted values. So, we can say that the orbital angular momentum of an electron of electrons in an atom is quantized. Now, if we plot the discrete values of this angular momenta of these different kinds of electrons, it would be something like what is shown on the slide right hand side that is there is a discrete nature. The diagram is having certain discrete values 0, root 2 h cut, then uh, root 6 h cut like that it will you can calculate and uh, you can put it. So, only discrete angular momentum values and is known as the quantization of the magnitude of orbital angular momentum. So, we have seen only magnitude part that is orbital angular momentum of the electrons magnitude. Magnitude part is allowed only certain values consistent with the equation L is equal to square root of L into L plus 1 into H cut or orbital angular momentum of the electrons in an atom are allowed only discrete values, not continuous range of values and the magnitude is restricted by this equation, keep in mind, square root of L into L plus 1 into H cut restrict the magnitude of orbital angular momentum of electrons. So, here it is direction quantization or space quantization. So, it is what about the direction of these electron orbits? Are these electrons allowed? to revolve around the nucleus in any direction or orientation? Answer is no. Because electrons are not allowed to revolve in any direction or plane. Again, it is restricted. That is direction or revolution or plane or plane of revolution of the electron is also restricted by quantum mechanics. This is what we call direction quantization or space quantization and it is an important aspect of vector atom model. So, to understand let us take two examples. See the diagram. Here two electrons are revolving in two different planes and the orbital angular momenta L is equal to R cross P are perpendicular to the plane of the orbits. right? That is the orbital angular momenta of these two electrons will be in two different directions. You can see that red and blue. Of course, the perpendicular to planes of the respective orbits. For the electron which is revolving in red orbit, then the orbital angular momentum will go along that red arrow perpendicular to the red plane. Similarly, second one that blue, that blue arrow which is perpendicular to the blue plane or the plane in which that uh, blue orbit is settled, uh, resting. Now, the magnitudes of red and blue arrows, arrows or vectors are same, but if you take 
the z component of these two angular momenta that is a projection of these orbital angular momenta vector along the z axis it will be different you can see that o r is the projection of that red vector on z axis and o b is a projection of blue vector on the z axis so o r is not equal to o b that is z component of first orbital angular momentum and the z component of second orbital angular momentum that is red and blue are not equal so when z component is different orientation of the angular momenta l will be different or orientation orientation of the orbits or orbital plane will be different right so we can say that these z components of orbital angular momenta that is l z fix the different orbital planes or precisely the orientation of electron orbit is quantized as given by an equation l z is equal to ml h cut where ml is another quantum number whose values are given by minus 1 sorry minus l minus l minus 1 minus l minus 2 0 etc up to plus l that is ml can take values only from minus l to plus l including 0 there will be 2l plus 1 values of ml or ml can take values from minus l to plus l with a difference of 1 plus or minus 1 so this equation lz is equal to ml h cut basically puts restriction on the direction in which this different orbit can orient itself or say the orientation of electron orbit in space this equation is also coming from quantum mechanics that is a schrodinger equation so this is not at random we are taking so this is a standard expression which is coming as a solution coming from the solution part of schrodinger equation and this expression lz is equal to ml h cut gives the z component of the orbital angular momenta of that particular plane so to analyze maybe we can take one example and uh, we'll try to understand say we'll take p orbital so here for p orbital l is equal to 1 so ml is equal to minus 1 0 and plus 1 and the, the that the direction restriction is l is z is equal to ml h cut okay so the z component of angular momentum l z can have three values minus h cross 0 and plus 1 h cross so what is the significance of this l z in the electron motion that is our discussion point is to understand the space quantization how these orbitals are uh, aligned in space or our search is in reality what is meant by these different values of l z right so here we need a lot of visualization a 3d visualization try to imagine generally for learning physics many occasion we need a uh, lot of visualization so here also please try to think carefully and uh, try to visualize what you are uh, studying so here z axis can be any standard axis normally z axis or z direction is the direction in which magnetic field is applied across the system which is a standard uh, reference direction and components of angular momenta along the z direction will be analyzed that is what we do so that is z axis taken as a standard reference axis you can take other axis as well but generally that direction in which magnetic field is applied will be taken here an atom or say electron system is assumed to be placed in an external magnetic field and every time this kind of an electron system is put in an external magnetic field electron orbit will orient itself in such a manner that the z component of the angular momentum lz is equal to ml h cross repeat every time this kind of an electron system is put in an external magnetic field electron orbit will orient itself in such a manner that z component of the angular momentum that is lz will take ml ml into h cross where ml is 
magnetic orbital angular momentum quantum number. So, for a p electron, the z component of angular momentum with respect to z axis will only have these three values that is minus h cross 0 and plus h cross. If it was a d orbital, then it will be minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 correspondingly you will have minus 2 h cross minus 1 h cross 0 plus h cross and plus 2 h cross. So, here we speak about we are considered p orbital. So, let us analyze one by one. First for L is that is equal to plus h cross. See the diagram there will be an L which is inclined to z axis correct. You can see that black L vector which is inclined little rightward towards uh, rightward right side and its projection is a projection on that z axis is L z and that value is marked as plus h cross right and perpendicular to that L is the electron orbit which is not shown on the left hand diagram but I have shown a red colored disc disc like pattern somewhere in the middle. So, these blue colored ellipse like pattern shown in the left diagram are not orbit they are nothing but circles actually it is the path of the tip of the orbital angular momentum vector L as it pulses around z axis. You can see the tip of orbital angular momentum is touching that blue ellipse. So, when that orbital angular momentum is possessing about z axis it will be going through that blue ellipse tip. But you know the angular momentum vector is perpendicular to orbital plane which is shown in red. See that black arrow is perpendicular to red plane. So, red plane is orbital plane black arrow is orbital angular momentum and LZ is H cross. So, plane of the elliptical orbit of the electron is perpendicular to the angular momentum L. The upper one for which LZ is H cross plus, plus H cross 1 H cross. Middle one LZ is equal to 0 and the lower one LZ is equal to minus H cross. Here I suppose you can see three things you try to visualize and see these three, three things which are very important. One is plane of the electron orbit. So, it is given in red color that disc like pattern. Then direction of orbital angular momentum which is that black arrow perpendicular to that. There are three black arrows touching the, uh, the blue ring. Okay, They are all uh, orbital angular momentum and the projection of these orbital angular momenta on the z axis which are given as LZ and it is possessing around the uh, that is z axis and the tip is touching that blue circle. I suppose now figure is very clear to you. Okay, now suppose you keep the tail of the orbital angular momenta vector at z axis that is fixed keeping the tail of the vector, vector is having tail and tip. So, keeping the tail of the vector which is in contact with the z axis stationary, you just rotate the tip of the angular momentum vector. When you rotate the tip of the angular momentum vector around z axis or LZ, then it will be touching that blue circle that is what is that precision. Then you will be getting infinite number of orientations for orbital angular momentum vector L or for the corresponding orbit given in red ellipse. That same red ellipse you can just make continuous rotation such that LZ is fixed. So, that if that uh, orbital angular momentum vector is possessing over that blue circle the LZ remains constant. That means that red orbit orbital plane can take different orientations depending on where that blue uh, where, where that orbital angular momentum is touching the blue ring because this orbital angular momentum vector is allowed to touch any point on the blue ring it can revolve. So, correspondingly you have got many uh, possible orientation but these are the only allowed orientation such that LZ should be fixed. So, for one LZ there are infinite orientations for orbits are allowed restriction is only on value of LZ. 
If you carefully visualize this precision or precision of the L vector, the rotation of angular momentum L due to all possible orientation of the orbital planes fixed by LZ will give a conical section. So, for a particular LZ, there are many possible orientations, but only those orientations such that LZ is fixed and those that rotation will give you a conical section. That is what is shown on the right hand side diagram. That is shown for L is equal to uh, 2, that is for D orbital. So, you can go up to that L is equal to 1, that is for P orbital. So, as the L vector presses around LZ, orbital angular momentum will trace cones. Upper and lower L corresponding to LZ plus H cross and LZ minus H cross, you will get cones as shown and for LZ is equal to 0, the tip of the orbital angular momentum vector L will trace only a circle. So, right hand side diagram is for D orbital as I mentioned and there are 5 cones. So, when L is processing about Z axis, there will be infinite possible orientations for L and orbital plane, but LZ should be constant, that is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics restrict the value of LZ. This tells that while the electrons revolve around the nucleus, the orientation of the electrons, electron orbits will be quantized in such a way that the orbital angular momentum of the orbit that is L will process around the magnetic field direction and the Z component of the orbital angular momentum LZ that is H cross. For P orbital there are three different possible values of LZ which will give two cones and one circle. If it is L is equal to 2 basically you will have D orbital and there will be five different values for LZ there is minus 2 h cross, minus 1 h cross, 0, plus 1 h cross and plus 2 h cross. So, you should uh, put your brain and carefully understand this 3D visualization. This is a beautiful uh, physics. Okay. For L is equal to 1, there will be 3 different conical sections. For L is equal to 2, there will be 5 conical sections. Of course, 1 is a circle. So, in general, there will be 2L plus 1 conical sections corresponding to different orientation of electron orbit in space and we call it space quantization of electron orbit. For L is equal to 1, there are 3 possible precessions that is for L, that is precession of L around, small l around, uh, that is L is at is equal to H cross, precession of capital L around LZ is equal to H cross, then precession of capital L around LZ is equal to 0 and then precession of capital L around LZ is equal to minus H cross. And uh, this is space quantization that is electron's orbital motion is quantized in space. It cannot take any value and it is restricted by the expression LZ is equal to ML H cross. Okay. So, space quantization restricts the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum through equation capital L is equal to square root of L into L plus 1 into H cut and the direction of orbital angular momentum is restricted through the relation L is equal to ML into H cross and these two equations are coming from solutions of quantum mechanical solution the Schrodinger equation. And the second part of vector atom model is spinning electron hypothesis and now we will see a spin of electron and associated angular momentum of electron and the quantization applicable there. So, to start with let us consider the spin motion of the of a classical system say so, spinning of earth as it goes along the orbit. Angular momentum associated in spin motion is spin angular momentum. Even though we compare the electron motion around the nucleus many times with planetary motion and that is rotation of or revolution of earth around the sun and the spinning of earth about its own axis. Strictly it is not correct, perfectly it is not correct because planetary motion is a classical system and electron motion is a quantum system. However, uh, one thing is sure that electron has an angular momentum due to spin motion which is the difference is it is quantized. So, the angular momentum of electron due to spin motion is also quantized with respect to both magnitude and direction. Like what we have seen in the case of quantization of orbital angular momentum, 
there are two defining equations one for quantization of the magnitude of the orbital magnitude of the spin angular momentum and the other is quantization of the orientation of the spin angular momentum orbital angular momentum also we have seen similar so spin motion as well we have two defining equations that is which come from solution of schrodinger equation the expression which gives quantization of magnitude of spin motion or spin angular momentum of the electron is basically written as s is equal to square root of s into s plus 1 into h cut or h bar or s cross where s is a quantum quantum number and it takes only one value that is half previously we had l is equal to minus that is 0 to n minus 1 here it is small s that is spin quantum number is allowed to have only one value that is half so since this quantum number is having only one value so spin angular momentum will also have only one value that is capital s spin angular momentum is equal to square root of half into half plus one into h cross that is root three by two h cut so whether an electron is a bound electron within the atom or it is a free electron an electron will always have an intrinsic property known as spin angular momentum associated with its existence and the magnitude of magnitude of this spin angular momentum which is an intrinsic property of electron will always be root 3 by 2 h cut in particle physics you will come across other elementary particles which are also having uh, this uh, spin is equal to half and their existence also will be associated with spin angular momentum uh, which is root 3 by 2 h cut example protons neutrons they are all spin half particles and exhibit spin angular momentum root 3 by 2 h cut <coughs> excuse me now what about the direction of this particular spin angular momentum of electrons for finding the direction or quantization of the spin angular momentum or orientation of the spin vector with respect to uh, a reference so we will look at the z component of the spin angular momentum which is coming from again quantum mechanical solution and it is s is z is equal to ms h cut where ms is magnetic spin quantum number which can take values from minus s to plus s in steps of one but since s is having only one value half so ms can have only two values one is plus half and the other is minus half right so we'll see the z component of spin angular momenta that is s z can have only have values of h cross by 2 and minus h cross by 2 right ms into h cut that is the data that is these two particular SZ values will allow two different orientation of electron orbit in space electron spin in space such that the projection of spin angular momentum associated with the spin motion projection of spin angular momentum associated with spin motion that is SZ on that is on Z axis should be plus h cross by 2 and minus h cross by 2 that is exactly the same way what we have discussed in orbital angular momentum that is space quantization of orbital uh, the spin angular momentum will also precise about z axis SZ and will make two conical sections in the opposite directions so the two precisions of the spin angular momentum will be such that one will lead to z component plus h cross by 2 and the other minus h cross by 2 so the magnitude of the spin of electron or spin angular momentum is quantized through the relation s is equal to square root of s into s plus 1 into h cut and the orientation of the spin or direction of spin is restricted or quantized through the relation s z is equal to ms h cross this is how the magnitude and orientation of spin of the electron are quantized and it is an intrinsic property of electron of the electron as well as other uh, such spin half particles like proton neutron etc so this is what is spin quantization okay spinning electron and spin quantization here we should note one very important point in quantum systems like electrons that is basically angular momentum is a conserved quantity that is our starting point we had mentioned 
But in quantum systems like electrons, which are associated with two different kinds of angular momenta, that is orbital angular momenta and the spin angular momenta, the two angular momenta need not to be conserved separately. Please note it. In the case of systems like electron, the two angular momenta need not to be conserved separately. Since there are two different vectors, there comes a vectorial addition which will give you a total angular moment of the electron. That is actually the angular moment of the electron. That is, the total angular moment of the electron should be conserved in electron system. So, orbital and the spin angular momenta individually need not to be conserved, but the vector sum should be conserved. So, there is to total angular momentum and it should be conserved. So, vectorial representation of the angular momenta are shown, that is total angular momenta is given by vector j is equal to vector l plus vector s. Also, it is to be noted that similar to the kind of quantization in magnitude and direction of orbital and spin angular momenta which we discussed, that is square root of l into l plus 1 into h cut, uh, that is ml h cut, then square root of s into s plus 1 into h cut, ms h cut, that is magnitude and direction are quantized. Here, which is applicable in magnitude and direction of total angular momentum as well. So, magnitude of the or magnitude quantization of the total angular momentum uh, magnitude is quantized as per relation j is equal to square root of j into j plus 1 into h cut where j is the total angular momentum quantum number which can have values from l plus s to mod l minus s that is l plus half and mod l minus half. As an example say p orbital j can have values 1 plus s that is 1 plus half that is equal to 3 by 2 and l minus s is half. So, total angular momentum there are two cases for cases and uh, the four, uh, for a uh, there is p orbital one is j is equal to 3 by 2 and the other is j is equal to half right. So, the total angular momentum that is total angular momentum quantum number. Now, total angular momentum is equal to for j is equal to 4 angular momentum quantum number j is equal to 3 by 2 for p orbital capital J is equal to root 3 by 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1 into h cut that is root 15 by 2 h cut and the second possibility when small j is equal to half then the total angular momentum of the electron for p electron is square root of half into half plus 1 into h cut is equal to root 3 by 2 h cut. So, and the here vectorial addition is also shown on the slide. Again, uh, like orbital and the spin angular momenta, the direction of the total angular momenta will also be quantized through a similar relation. That is, j z is equal to m j into h cut, where m j can have values from minus j to plus j in steps of 1. That is, for j is equal to half, m j can have value plus half and minus half j is equal to 3 by 2, mj can have value, values minus 3 by 2, minus half, plus half and plus 3 by 2. So, here also we can plot those conical diagrams we had seen earlier for all possible orientations. So, total angular momentum vector will precess about z axis and the z component should satisfy j z is equal to mj h cut and the magnitude of total angular momentum will satisfy the relation j is equal to root j into j plus 1 into h cut. So, this is how the space quantization is described in uh, physics or in our this atom description vector atom model. So, this is a very interesting uh, discussion I kindly go through it again and again and understand this is a very beautiful part of physics. Okay, I stop here. So, you may listen these two sessions that is last uh, entry point in vector atom model and this session a few times till you understand the concept of space quantization and spinning electron hypothesis. It is not like many other part of uh, other discussions. Here you have to understand, you have to visualize and uh, see try, uh, see in air okay, and uh, try to get the picture idea. So, a few terms we came across in the discussion are listed on the slide uh, and uh, you may prepare a brief write up on these various quantized vectors and quantum numbers for exam point of view. So, exam point of view, maybe this is an elaborate discussion which we had today. 
uh, generally in books you will you will not see such an elaborate discussion on a vector atom model and in many cases students will just by heart those quantum numbers etc with uh, understanding what exact without understanding what exactly it is okay so i put a little extra effort to give a better picture of vector atom model and uh, uh, if you also put little additional extra effort to understand this concept i'll be happy it will be really great Thank you very much.